I'm joined now by Peter Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. Peter, hi, thanks for joining us. Let's start then with this downgrade from Fitch this week and the subsequent spike in Treasury yields. Should investors be worried? Well, just when we thought uh, things were looking resolved and that the Fed was probably near the end of their rate hike, all of a sudden, out of the blue this week, we get a, a, a downgrade from Fitch, which surprised everybody. And certainly the market is reflecting that surprise throughout the rest of the week. Uh, I will say that of the three major rating agencies, Moody's, S&P, and Fitch, Fitch tends to be the, a distant third in terms of its credibility. But even though it is a distant third, it is still impactful. And I think many investors are trying to digest the potential impact that it would have longer term. On the earnings front, Peter, we've got some big numbers out after the bell today from Apple and Amazon. What are we expecting? Well, in spite of the downgrade, and here's where it gets complicated and here's where people get confused, is we think at first that everything is going well, then we get the downgrade, but then I think we will whipsaw back to positive results. The consumer, uh, as we say in the United States, is almost dancing on the tables in terms of being so excited and so resilient in the face of many rate hikes, over a year of rate hikes. So I expect Apple, Amazon, and other retail-related companies to post very promising results and give us guidance that will be very optimistic. Do you think, though, that Treasury yields moving higher again is something to worry about for those big growth companies? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we only have one data point recently, which was in 2011, when S&P downgraded the U.S. Treasury market. And I remember it clearly. It was on a Friday afternoon after the market closed. And all weekend, we worried, what would Treasuries do? And ironically, on Monday morning, Treasuries actually rallied, meaning that their rates went down. So if that's any indication, uh, and I think the reason they did that is even though people were concerned, U.S. Treasuries are considered a flight to quality, the highest quality you can get. So I think that this is just transient, that the spike in rates are part of the process of digesting this shocking out of the blue news and that we will return to more normal rates probably in a week or two. You mentioned that investors are increasingly confident the Fed is coming to the end of its hiking cycle. We've had some pretty strong economic data this week, very positive payroll numbers yesterday, and looking forward to the big non-farms number tomorrow. It all looks like the labour market remains strong in the US. But are markets still taking good economic data as bad news because they're worried that will mean more moves from the Fed? It is ironic, isn't it? It's very hard to understand the logic sometimes of markets. And I will say this, I'm a believer that it takes at least a year for any Fed hike to actually work its way through and manifest its effects on the U.S. economy. So there have been 11 rate hikes and only four of those 11 are over a year old. So just think of that. That represents about 2.25% in hikes. We have 3% in remaining hikes that need to so-called season to be a year old. So I'm thinking what the Fed will do is realize that there is a delay impact on these rate hikes and that they're seeing positive results now. And they probably will just stop raising rates because they realize that there's still 3% of hikes that are waiting to manifest themselves, uh, i.e. being a year old. Peter Anderson of Anderson Capital Management, thanks so much for joining us.